The strange story of the Carlingford Leprechauns all started in 1989. One day a man named P.J. O'Hare was tending to his garden when he heard a scream coming from the nearby Foy Mountain. So O'Hare stopped what he was doing and ran towards the mountain to see what the heck was going on. And while he was walking up it, he saw a small patch of scorched earth, a green suit, charred bones, and a hat. He also found four gold coins. Now O'Hare was convinced that he found the bones of a dead leprechaun and he placed the bones, as well as the gold coins and the other items, in a glass box at his pub, and they still remain there to this very day. Now most of the locals didn't believe him, but some did. His close friend Kevin didn't believe him at all, but he was very curious, so he arranged a leprechaun hunt. Kevin hid five fake leprechaun statues throughout the countryside, and he offered 1,000 Irish pounds to anyone who could find one of these fake leprechaun statues. And he did this hoping that maybe someone would actually find a real leprechaun. And this leprechaun hunt is now an annual event. But sadly no one has ever found a leprechaun. Well, at least not during the hunt. Now many years later, after Mr. O'Hare died, the four gold coins went missing. But one day Kevin was repairing a stone wall at a house not too far away from his own when he found them inside the wall inside a purse. And shortly after this discovery he claims that he started to see leprechauns. His first encounter happened one day while he was walking his dog through the mountains. And while he was walking, he saw three leprechauns just sitting on a rock. And Kevin and his dog were paralyzed, they could not move. But they saw the leprechauns run and hide. Now when Kevin got home, he saw that his wife was very upset with him. She told him that he was gone for seven hours. But Kevin thought that he was only gone for about an hour and a half. He was shocked when he looked at the time. And after this encounter, he was now a full-blown believer in leprechauns. And since then, he has had more encounters. One of them includes an elder leprechaun with a name that I know I won't be able to pronounce. But this elder told Kevin that there are 236 leprechauns that live in this area and that they are the last of their kind. And Kevin claims that he has talked with this elder many times throughout the years. And thanks to Kevin and other believers, these leprechauns are now, or have been for the past 11 years, protected. And he is the only one that has ever seen them. Now a lot of people believe, or at least want to believe, that these leprechauns are real. And there is alleged evidence, such as the bones, the green suit, the hat, and the gold coins. But they have never been tested. It would be interesting to see what the results would be. But then again, maybe not. Sometimes, it might be better to just let people believe. Another leprechaun sighting in Ireland happened in 1908 when several school children, as well as a few adults believed that they saw a leprechaun or some sort of small magical creature. According to this old newspaper clipping, when one person saw it and told another, that person would no longer be able to see it, but the person he or she told could. Now since so many claimed to see this tiny being in a red coat, some believed that it might have been an escaped circus monkey, which is a good theory considering most of these eyewitnesses were young. But no escape monkeys were reported at this time. And also monkeys cannot disappear right before your eyes. Making this an interesting case. This article also tells of another story that is very disturbing. In Ireland in 1895, a man named Michael believed that his wife was abducted by fairies and replaced a changeling. So Michael, he killed her. He set her on fire. And this event is known as the last witch bird in Ireland. And this case reminds me of that movie The Hollow, which is based on this belief that there are magical creatures that live in the forest, and they at times for whatever reason would abduct people and replace them. Creepy indeed. There's another story from Ireland that I've been wanting to cover for some time now, and this one has nothing to do with leprechauns but Bigfoot. Recently a woman in Ireland, while walking in a park, stumbled upon some huge claw footprints. At first she thought that this must be some kind of joke, but when she realized that these tracks went on for a quarter of a mile, she wasn't so sure. This woman stated that she goes to this park all the time and has never seen anything like this before, so she took a few pictures. Then she contacted the IBRO, the Ireland Bigfoot Researcher Organization, and I was shocked to learn that there is a Bigfoot organization in Ireland. And they stated that they were not aware of any sightings in this area where this lady found these tracks, but they did say that there have been other sightings in other regions throughout Ireland recently. And if there are Bigfoot sightings in England, well, why not in Ireland? Now when I looked at this picture, I didn't see a Bigfoot track, but I did see a huge claw track. And there's no known animal that lives in this region that can make a track this big. 
So it's either obviously a hoax, or maybe there's a large cat-like creature roaming around Ireland. And I know that sounds extremely unlikely considering that people have lived here for thousands of years, and there's not really that many places to hide. But in England, there are sightings of huge cat-like creatures. Most believe that this is because in the 60s, many hip rich Londoners bought exotic animals, and when it became illegal to own or to have them as pets, they released them into the wild. And there have been hundreds, if not thousands of big cat sightings in the UK. And I have seen some pictures and video clips. And I do think that some of these might be exotic cats, not house cats, but I could be wrong. Now even though there have been tons of sightings, there has never been one of these alleged cats caught. Well at least not to my knowledge, making some believe that maybe something paranormal is going on here. And I might cover this in a future video, as I do find some of these sightings extremely fascinating. Until next time, this is Paranormal Junkie. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned.